We're here inside the headquarters of Wizards of the Coast at Renton, Washington. There are some chairs, there are some tables, and there are some cards. <laughs> lots and lots of cards. Because right here in this room, every common, every mythic rare, every burn spell, every counter spell, every angel, and every demon get made. Because this is where the magic happens. Welcome to Inside R&D, the story of Avacyn Restored. The entire design of Innistrad and Dark Ascension was trying to capture the flavor of a horror movie, of trying to make you feel like you, know, you were there. And so all the mechanics were really top down to get that flavor. It was important to me that we had the graveyard be a strong component because we knew that you know, you know, the graveyard made a lot of sense thematically with a horror set. I knew the tribal mattered because monsters matter, that in a horror movie, yeah, you're gonna have your zombies and your werewolves and your vampires. And so there are very strong components that were playing through the set. So when we got to Avacyn Restored, we wanted to have the feel of goodness kind of coming out. And so what that meant was all the things that represented evil kind of had to get subdued. In the design for Avacyn Restored, we knew this idea that we wanted something that was very flashy and splashy, something that you could be like, wow, I can't believe they did that. This is something totally crazy. Miracles actually started out as a different mechanic that we spent a long time trying to get right, but in the end, it didn't really work. There was a time we were kind of exploring the space of rules, and for a long time, we were trying to iterate on that and make it fun to play. But in the end, it was like, oh, this is, this is really shouldn't be breaking. But what we did know is that let's make it really exciting sometimes in gameplay. And what's the most exciting part of the game? It's drawing a card. It's like, oh, what is, what's going to come next? What am I going to top deck? And obviously, that naturally flows into the mechanic of Miracle, which is like, oh my goodness, I'm in a terrible situation. How can I get out of it? Aha, I found it. This is the thing I needed. This is the Miracle. We knew that we wanted to have a more positive energy, that if you look at Innistrad, it's about negative things happening, about evilness purveying and monsters wrecking everything. So we wanted a sense of things coming together. The humans, their strength is the idea that they work together and that we wanted to kind of convey that, okay, finally, humans and the angels are all coming together, so we wanted a mechanic that, that expressed that. So the way Soulbind worked originally was when you, a soul-bound creature came into play, you would pick a creature and play and you would bind them together. I think now they're paired, but at the time they were buying creatures and you bound them. And the idea was once they're together, then they shared an ability. And we experimented originally with, well, what if, you know, I give something to you and then you give something to me and, you know, like, well, when I'm paired with somebody, I give my other person flying and when they're paired with somebody, they give me, you know, trample and it got very complicated. And what we realized was it was much cleaner if, if I bind with somebody, I give myself and that creature the thing I bind with. So if we, you know, if we soul bond and pair together, and I have flying, I give I have flying, I give you flying, we all have flying. So if I see them, I go, oh, this pair has flying. The big thing for us was we really wanted to reinforce the idea of working together, of you know, that the way you defeat the evil is the humans coming together and working together. And so soul bound turned out to be a really fun mechanic, and that it just it just played really interestingly. So in the storyline for Avacyn Restored, the Hell Vault is a sliver of moon that houses things, particularly evil things that Avacyn put in there. And when the Hell Vault was shattered, Avacyn was released, and also Gristlebrand, or main nemesis. So an important part of this is that like fantasy worlds don't work unless there is a good side and a bad side to fight. So we made sure to give Avacyn her card in her uh, glory, and we needed a big villain to, for her to fight, Gristlebrand. Big demon that is uh, very splashy as well. There's a lot of talk in a set called Avacyn Restored about Avacyn. Who is Avacyn? And we knew when we had to make the card, like, the profile of the set, you know, the, the person on the poster is one of the Planeswalkers. And this is the one of the set that's not true, you know, that we have a legendary creature on the poster, because, well, her name's in the set. And so we knew walking in that we needed to make Avacyn's cool. She's supposed to represent the savior of us all, you know, of Innistrad. And so we wanted to give her a very protective mechanic. And so we came up with the idea of, well, when she's in play, she just protects everything. Like nothing can get destroyed if Avacyn's in play. And so really that was our first idea and bam. Also, Grizzlebrand, who was kind of her opposite, we knew that we wanted someone who was a, a demon, someone who was kind of making the player want to make a deal with the demon. And so we loved the idea of paying life for cards because that felt very demon to us. And it's not just any number of cards. Like, no, you get a whole bunch of cards, but you've got to pay a whole bunch of life. There's no, no one life for one card. No, no. We'll give you seven cards, you pay your seven life. 
And the thing we loved about that was it felt demon-y and grandiose and you were tempted to play him because he's powerful, but it really makes you make a deal that can, can bite you back. And that we like that about Grizzle Band. And just like Avacyn, the very first Grizzle Band we made was a Grizzle Band we went with. And so I, we kind of had our two legendary creatures right out the gate and they rode all through the process. So this set definitely had one of those moments where I saw an opportunity and I leapt at it. So one of my favorite things, I love flickering. The very first flickering card was in Urza's Destiny. And what flicker does is it takes a permanent, removes it from the game, and then brings it back. And the beautiful thing about flickering is it is like the Swiss army knife of mechanics. It just does everything. So all sorts of cool things you can do with it. And I've always loved flickering. And so whenever I see a chance, I try to get flickering in. Because one of the things you want to do when you build a set is make sure there's different avenues for how you do it. That the good guys have lots of different ways that are shown, but we wanted to have enough breadth. So you have enough things you could do, both casually and when you draft. And so I saw the opportunity for flicker, I leapt at it, and woo, lots of flickering. So all said and done, design worked about 11 months on Avacyn Restored. It's a large set. In those 11 months, we tried mechanics that didn't work. We, in fact, tried a whole bunch of mechanics that didn't work, but we found our miracles. We got Solbon and made Solbon work correctly. We got our Planeswalkers. We figured out how to write the balance so that Innistrad and Avacyn Restored had a nice balance between them. We came up with how to bring out humanities and make human tribal interesting in a different way. We did all these different things to really turn Avacyn Restored into the set it is today. And it's kind of fun when you stand back and you look at it, you're like, you know what? We made Avacyn Restored.